Welcome back to part 4 of I Tamed the Duke and without further ado let's continue the story. Viola was about to leave for the academy when she was surprised to see her father there. He, too, was surprised to see her leaving and asked where she was going. Viola explained that she was visiting the academy, and her father agreed. Unlike the original Viola, who invited men to her room, she had been focusing on drawing. Thanks to this, her father no longer ignored her greetings, though he still didn't smile at her. To be honest, that would be my reaction if my daughter ever got an OnlyFans account. Anyway, Viola arrived at the academy and met a middle-aged professor who greeted her warmly. The professor mentioned she had been waiting to meet Viola. Viola chuckled and felt a bit shy but thanked the professor. The professor then asked if Viola had made a decision, hoping she had found the answer she was looking for. Viola gathered her things and told the professor to wait while she showed her paintings. The professor was very pleased and surprised by Viola's artwork, noting that it was different from others. Viola anxiously asked what the professor meant who replied that it was precisely why they wanted her to teach at the academy. Viola felt anxious and asked for clarification, to which the professor responded with a grim smile, saying it seemed they had invited the right person. Later, Viola happily wandered the campus, pondering that the headmistress was a lot more open-minded than she had initially thought. Viola knew she had successfully explained her lecture methods and wondered if she should take a look around the academy. Suddenly, she noticed from afar that it was Rabina and the creepy dude Theo, whom she called the one pull is enough guy. Viola overheard their conversation. Theo told Rubina that he had done what she had asked, visibly flinching from her touch. Rubina still questioned Theo if he had truly completed the task, noticing that nothing had happened. Theo admitted he didn't know why, mentioning, she's a little strange these days, presumably referring to Viola. Rubina considered this troublesome and probably couldn't reward him, making Theo nervous. Is Rubina the antagonist here? The girl grinned with lifeless eyes and told Theo she didn't like whiny men, instructing him to find out what she wanted to know. From her hiding spot afar, our girl couldn't discern their conversation clearly, but she speculated that Rabina was behaving unusually. She wondered if this was truly Rabina's nature, considering she was usually innocent, or if she was putting on an act. Unfazed, Viola brushed off the situation, figuring it would be easier to deal with Rabina when she was like that. She pondered if Rabina couldn't drop the act around her too, thinking it would make them better friends. Viola turned around and walked away, noticing Rabina seemed upset about her interaction with the Duke. She felt relieved seeing Rabina getting along with another man. The next day, while Viola was wandering the campus, she heard someone calling her name. Turning around, she was surprised to see Duke Fell, who asked why she was at the academy. Viola was vividly surprised, thinking she should be the one asking him why he was there. Fell responded that he was a sponsor of the academy, which made Viola embarrassed. She explained to him that she was there because of her paintings. Fell then asked if she was going to teach art. Viola felt uneasy about his question, wondering if he was surprised because he thought her paintings were a mess. Fell smiled, clarifying that wasn't what he meant, but Viola didn't believe him at all. He saw her reaction and held back his laughter, which annoyed Viola. Then he told her that he would attend her lecture sometimes. She replied that Fell would probably regret that, but he was still looking forward to it. Viola, seeing Fell with a grin on his face, became annoyed and thought of him as a sly guy. She knew he was just going to tease her and probably make him regret it for sure. Suddenly, Theo, this creepy dude, called out to her, shouting her name. Viola, still annoyed and wondering who it was now, turned around and saw Theo with a nervous grin on his face. Asking what she was doing at the academy, both Viola and Fell remained silent while Theo told Viola that she had refused to meet him when he asked. Viola responded, telling him it was because he was wearing such ridiculous clothes. Theo then asked if she was tired of him now, causing our girl to feel disgusted by his words. She simply told him that they needed to put it that way because she doesn't like men who are unfaithful. Theo shook with nervousness, asking what she meant by that. Suddenly, he clenched his fist and shouted at Viola that she couldn't treat him like that, claiming that he had given his all to her. Viola saw this and became serious, fearing that Theo was about to hit her. Suddenly, a man, whom Viola referred to as Daddy, swooped in to save her, stating that he shouldn't touch Lady Viola. Fell embraced her protectively, realizing that Viola had terrible taste in men. We see both of them hugging, leaving Viola shocked and wondering what is going on. Fell apologized to Theo for his rudeness, asking if he should never appear before Lady Viola again. Theo heard this and asked Fell who he thought he was. Suddenly, Fell embraced Viola, declaring that starting today, she would be in a relationship with him. This surprise left our girl bewildered. A few days later at the academy, we see her waiting and frustrated, thinking that she has no idea what the Duke is thinking. 
That day, she didn't make a big deal out of it because she was taken aback. However, that idiot fainted from a fever afterward because of his curse or something. She then realized, blushing, why she kept thinking about the Duke. Now, she's trying to get it together, reminding herself that her workplace is at the academy right now, which is not important at the moment. She should be more concerned about the issue at hand. To her surprise, she noticed there weren't any students around and wondered why there weren't any students. And so our girl walks around the school, thinking that there is something not right, wondering how there can be not a single student. Suddenly, our girl notices something as she sees a crowded classroom. She wonders why there are so many people, and now she's feeling jealous about this. As Viola takes a peek, she wonders who is giving the lecture. To her surprise, it is none other than Rabina, and it's Rabina's class. Viola is amazed by this and thinks about how people are naturally drawn to her since she's a fantastic artist. So Viola then asks some students why they're watching from here even though it looks like the class is full. The student explains that Lady Rabina is giving the students a lecture demonstration. Rabina told them that she hoped people would take her course after knowing what it was about, so she was giving a demonstration of what her lectures would be like. They expressed that it is so very like Lady Rabina to come up with such a considerate idea. But of course, Viola wasn't too happy about this and was shocked to hear that. In shock and disbelief, she wonders what is going on, knowing that the lecture demonstration is something she proposed to the headmistress. She remembers the headmistress's words, thinking about how creative a method Viola proposed that no one has ever done anything like that before in the history of that academy. And now Viola is thinking that it must have been the headmistress who took the idea. So she goes to see the headmistress. At first, Viola apologizes for appearing suddenly and asks why Rabina is giving the lecture demonstration that our girl proposed before. This shocks the headmistress as well, thinking that it can't be, knowing that Lady Rabina never told her about such a thing. And yet that girl is giving the demonstration right now. This makes Viola frown and slowly realize something sad, knowing that on the exact same day and time, she was planning to give her own lecture demonstration. We can see the headmistress feeling confused as well, knowing that it was indeed a strange thing. She remembers that Rabina did visit some time ago to discuss her lesson, and now she is thinking that there has been some sort of misunderstanding. But no, Viola doesn't want any of that bullshit, thinking that it was just a misunderstanding, wondering if it really is just like that. She made arrangements to hold the lesson tomorrow instead. After gathering her things, she should return home and rest. But as our girl was about to go, she saw Rabina at her classroom. When she happened to make eye contact with her at the same perfect time and waved at her with a bright smile, to her, it felt like she was displaying her superiority. Now Viola calls her a bitch because of that. And now, realizing that Rabina did it on purpose, even if she called her out on it now, she would simply feign ignorance and apologize in tears like a two-faced bitch. Knowing that Viola would become the one who made Rabina, her poor, wicked-hearted friend, cry in front of all those people. And now, Viola didn't give up crap even after seeing Rabina's true self, wondering why Rabina decided to stab her in the back like that. But in the end, our girl now agrees with that, and wanted to see how Rabina wanted to play that game right. It's already too late for her to live quietly now. We can see Viola with fury that she'll have to show her what kind of person she is, making her regret not leaving her alone. But later on, we can see Viola thinking that unfortunately, she has no idea what to do for tomorrow's lecture, and wondering what she can do to attract people's attention. When suddenly, she remembered something and noticed that in front of her was the real Viola's diary. What a surprise, and she might have missed it because her room was so dirty before. Now, this was useful information that she found. It immediately started by mentioning Rabina, guessing the real Viola had been really close together with Rabina. As she continued to read the diary, she was dazed at first, but then slowly, reading it. Our girl was filled with shock that this is really completely different from what she read in the novel, where this was all the truth. You see, in Viola's entries, it began on a positive note. The drawing is fun for her, noting that her parents also complimented her, saying that she had potential. There, we can see Rabina, that to her, it is really a big help and was a good friend for her. However, it all changed on what came after that rendered our girl speechless. As she read Viola's diary, it was written that recently several men have been approaching her to strike up a conversation, that they're almost too nice to her, that maybe she has become a slightly more charming woman thanks to Rabina. She thought that her painting style wasn't all that bad. However, Rabina told her that she shouldn't use that method and taught her Rabina's technique instead. Even though it wasn't necessary, 
Her drawings are slowly starting to look more like Rabina's, knowing that it is all wrong, that her artwork doesn't feel like her own anymore. The real Viola now noticed and heard about a rumor that all the men who approached her were Rabina's lovers. Before she knew it, people were calling her a coquettish minx who stole her best friend's men, knowing that something wasn't right. Now, the current Viola doesn't know that Rabina was a lying bitch. She slowly remembers and realizes that Rabina was the one who recommended new drawing techniques to her saying that she would be able to draw more expressively. But now, everyone is criticizing her, saying that she's just copying from Rabina. Now, back to the diary. The real Viola coincidentally met a certain man, unlike other men who would touch her without preservation. He always kept a polite distance from her. She decided to just ignore what other people say about her. It's not like they will ever believe what she tells them anyway. He believes in her, and that is all that matters. Our girl felt an emotion that she had never felt before. Her heart fluttered from nervousness. He told her that he was in love with someone else, but she promised herself that she would happily wish him the best. Now, she wonders why does that person have to be Rabina? And why is Rabina always involved in her life? For the first time, she actually wanted to steal her lover, even though she knew that it was wrong. When she sees the two of them happy together, it pains her, and her heart hurts. And that man is none other than Fell. After reading the diary, she began to take deep breaths to calm herself down, seeking peace of mind and inner peace. However, she couldn't do it and was very mad about Rabina. After learning that Rabina is a two-faced bitch with a disgusted and furious expression, Viola won't forgive Rabina for what she did. The next day, we see Fell as he visited our girl Viola. He stated that this wasn't what he was expecting at all and asked if their class today is a one-on-one -on -one lesson. Now, of course, Viola thinks that Fell is teasing her, asking if he is. Nevertheless, she told him that it looks like he won't be able to listen to her lecture today. But then Viola asked for a little help. Of course, Fell has time to spare because the lecture he came to listen to was cancelled. He then saw Viola's art and asked if that was the painting she was about to teach. She thought she would finish it during the demonstration, but she was already done. Viola admits that it was, but it was not complete yet. As she smiles brightly, she told Fell that she has her own secret technique. The story shifts outside the campus, and we see crowds of people or students murmuring as they notice Lady Viola, wondering what they were doing. One of Viola's acquaintances appears and tells them that Viola has situated herself in the middle of the courtyard like some lowly merchant, as they mock her because of that. Here we can see our girl carrying her artwork, and suddenly she starts painting her drawing black. All of them are still judging her, stating that they did not hear a single student attend Lady Viola's previous lecture. Now, the others are thinking that Viola is trying to display her art but notice that the paintings are a little too odd. They judge her, questioning if her work can even be called a painting in the first place. It seems Viola is making one last desperate attempt to grab everyone's attention. To them, it is a bit sad to watch. One person notices something about Viola, wondering if she has decided not to care anymore, thinking about how disgraceful that is. But then they notice the Duke, who is fell. They are shocked as to why the Duke is also painting and helping out Viola. Now her friends think that Lady Viola seduced him since he was there, questioning why he would be sitting by her side in the first place. We can see Viola glancing at Fell, thinking that even the way he paints is sexy. She doesn't mind that and wants to start their plan. Viola then asked the audience if they would like to join instead of just watching. The two of them jolted as they heard that, asking would they. Viola then explained that this was her class where they do hands-on learning and asked why they don't give it a try since they are curious about what she was doing. The two girls, of course, are hesitant and just mock our girl by saying that she ruined the drawing with all the black paint and now question her on what more she could possibly teach. But in the end, one of them changed her mind and was intrigued by what will happen, as she supposed that it wouldn't hurt just to try, and she hopes that she won't be disappointed. And so Viola teaches this girl by telling her to draw over the black painting with a stick. She told them that it is like magic, with a single wooden stick, one can create such a masterpiece. The girl was shocked to see the work, she had never seen anything like that before. All the students agreed. Despite their embarrassment, they had never been good artists, but they felt a sense of pride seeing their completed drawings. Viola smiled and told the student that it was a wonderful sentiment. Her only wish is for everyone to know the joys of art and that inventing can become a stunning creation. The belief that an artist must always be talented is a prejudice, biased, making everyone touched by Viola's words. Moreover, she told them that there is no single answer to art. Therefore, her class is open to those who can't draw well, as she intended to teach using methods that can't be found anywhere else. This way, her students can easily express themselves while having fun, just like what they did earlier. And with that, they ended their class today.
Now, some of the students are acknowledging her as a teacher and asking when they can start registering for her class. Fel sees Viola as she is successful and Viola tells them that they can start registering right away. So, some of them need to hurry and go sign up. To them, it looks like the class will be full if they're late, and they probably think that Viola's class is so interesting. Now, in Viola's mind, she thinks of this as great as she expected. Suddenly, Rabina appears and looks to be so shocked about that. Viola knows that Rabina was watching and wonders what her next move will be. Later on, Viola goes to the headmistress's office, and she can't believe that she didn't recognize such a gem earlier. Not only is her current class full, but the students requested they hold more classes for Viola. Add to that, she heard that Viola had their hands on lesson in the courtyard today. Viola apologizes that she didn't ask for permission first. However, the mistress tells her that it is okay, and in the future, she urges her to feel free to do whatever. Our girl won the academy, and they will fully support her in every way. We see the headmistress full of excitement as she tells her that it is fine with her, asking if she could teach more classes, which of course, our girl accepts, and she was looking forward to her work. She walks with joy that it started out a little lousy but all swell that ends well that for her it was a perfect day that she have enough students and will be teaching more classes as well now she can go home after picking up her belongings but when she went outside she was shocked that her old belongings were gone the and reveals that it was her father's that she couldn't bring herself to use the tools so she just kept them at her side our girl scanning and looking around that maybe she just misplaced it or something. Since her name is on the tool the person who took him might give them back as she thinks about it but then suddenly she accidentally bumped to someone in behind but the guy catches her and tells our girl that she should be more careful next time our girl is surprised to hear an angelic face in front of her. And so Viola tells her story and thanks him as well for catching her. The mysterious guy grins and tells her that it was nothing that she seems to be enough rush asking to continue on her way. Viola leaves and thanks that dude, and tells her that she will give him a gift with the painting or something the next time they met. In her mind of course her painting aren't amazing enough to give to someone but based on their uniqueness they could become a good as Picasso's piece someday. At the end of the day, she couldn't find her things and just went home feeling sad. There she meets her maid, Jenna, who asks Viola about her day, noticing that Viola doesn't seem to be in a good mood. Viola notices as well that Jenna seems worried about her. Jenna then gives her a letter, saying that it came for her, stating that her art tools are with him, and said to come to the Defloa Manor if Viola wants her stuff back. It's signed with the mysterious man's name, which of course is Fel. Viola is shocked that it was Fel who took it, though she appreciates that he kept it safe. She trembles with nervousness and tells Jenna that she has to visit the Defloa Manor tomorrow, asking her to help with the preparations that she needed to go to rescue some hostages. She thinks she'll be going to the academy more often in the future. While her parents hear what she said and are surprised that she didn't get fired, it hurts our girl for their reaction. She just tells them that, in fact, she will be teaching more classes because there were too many students who wanted to listen to her lectures. Jenna is surprised and inspired at the same time, congratulating our girl. Now, since it seems her parents have also been quietly watching her for a while, Viola calls out to them. They are afraid to her, but Viola grins with joy, flashes a peace sign, and tells them that she did an amazing job at the academy. With that, I will conclude this part of the episode. Now, what will happen next? First, as we were shocked to reveal that Rabina was a two-faced girl, what is her next plan? Who is the handsome dude who bumped into our girl? Maybe a new male lead. Lastly, why did the Duke hide Viola's stuff? Tune in next time for the episode, and as always, it's our destiny to discover new manhwa. Thank you for watching.